Except for the numerous dusky wings, I found the punctuation butterflies the most difficult to differentiate in all of Wisconsin's butterflies. Today we're going to look at these five species. The question mark, satyr comma, green comma, eastern comma, and gray comma, and develop a process for identifying them. We really don't have a clear way to explain the mathematics and arrangements of shapes, colors, and textures in something as complex as a butterfly's wing. We employ some terms such as spiral that help us understand phenomena as different as snails, DNA, hurricanes, and galaxies. But the underside of an eastern comma is described in Wikipedia as striped with dark and light brown, while insectidentification.com describes it as ripples of light and dark brown. Neither description even begins to describe the complex patterning of the comma's underside, and neither description helps us tell an eastern comma from a sugar maple, let alone another butterfly. Entomologists have developed several tools that would be part of a language for describing complex patterns. Terms like margin, cell end bar, and post median band allow us to hone in on specific regions of the butterfly wing. Lunate, chevron, spots, blotches are just some of the words we use to describe particular markings. The obvious shape on commas is the white C shape or comma on the underwing. We'll look at that in a bit. In the field, we often have to make quick identifications. There, we rely on field marks. They aren't always to be trusted as butterfly species are not always as clearly denoted as we would like, particularly in closely related species. But as a tool, field marks can help us out. With commas in the question mark, I go through a process of elimination to determine identity. Let's look at the top sides of these butterflies first, beginning with the rarest and most easily identified comma, the satyr, a butterfly of the most northern counties in Wisconsin. From above, the satyr comma appears the brightest of all our commas as its orange-yellow markings reflect more light. To confirm a satyr comma, look at the margins near the tails. If they are orangish-yellowish, you've got a satyr comma. Otherwise, you've eliminated one of five options, the least likely. Now let's check to see if we have a question mark. In from the wingtips, the question mark has a black bar that all the commas lack. Find that bar, you've got question mark. Otherwise, you're down to three options. To determine whether or not it's a gray comma, we look at the forewing cell, near where the wing attaches to the body. Right here, you'll find a dark circular patch. If there is a smaller dark patch or smudge above it, you've eliminated gray from contention. Otherwise, you have a gray comma. That leaves us eastern and green comma to consider. As the eastern has different forms, this differentiation is, in my opinion, the hardest to make. Greens also have a range of different colorations. Some contend that the dark patch lacked by the gray is a subtle smudge in easterns and a quite obvious dark spot in greens, but I've seen intermediates in both species. If the hind wing is almost completely black, you've got an eastern comma. Otherwise, I examine the undersides. When we look at these five butterflies from below, the question mark usually has a white dot next to the comma, making it a question mark, though this is not always true. The second field mark to check is what Glassberg terms the median band, shown here. If this band is straight and forms a sharp point at the top, you've identified a question mark. Now look at the forewing just above the head. The long bar paralleling the antenna confirms a gray comma. Otherwise, only three options left. Green commas often have green splotches on both the post-medial and sub-marginal areas, 
using Glassberg's terminology. But lighting and variation can make the green spots hard to observe, especially since I'm usually watching greens on the ground where not much light reaches their underside. A field mark that I found for myself is the shape of the wing. Greens have a more ornate pattern along the wing edge than do the other commas, at least from ones I've seen in northern Wisconsin. When I think I've found a green comma, I'm careful to get photos of both the top and the bottom side to confirm ID later. The final detail, the way to determine if your butterfly is a satyr comma or an eastern comma, requires a close look at the patterning directly below the comma. On eastern commas, this little segment, a post-median, meanders while the satyr segment is more or less straight. Comma identification is not for the faint of heart. It's not an exact science, and it takes a lot of experience. And there's more room for error the further north you go in Wisconsin. In southern Wisconsin, you don't have to worry about satyr commas or green commas. But in the northern counties, they definitely make it more difficult. I think the best attitude to take is that it's going to take a few years to know the commas in any depth, and that you can take as many photos as you can to help learn identification.